Hey guys, Miss Peterson here. And today we're going to be walking through how to use Excel to do our calculations for our Momentum, Energy, and Collisions lab. So remember, the purpose of this lab was to see how collisions of different types affect the momentum um, and kinetic energy in those collisions. So I've already typed my data into Excel, as you can see here. Zoom on in so it's a little bit easier. If your headings are going off and you don't want to make your things that wide, it is simply the wrapped text button. Okay, so under the home menu, it is wrap text, and that'll make it so it'll split into those two lines for you. So I have my different types of collisions here. Um, and you know, it kind of bothers me that they're all different row heights. So I'm gonna show you the easy fix for that. You just highlight it and go to, oh, just highlight it. And then when you adjust the height, it'll automatically make all of those rows that height. Um, makes it look a little bit cleaner. So I have the masses of my carts. I'm gonna go ahead and put borders on that data table and go ahead and put the borders on this data table. Now, because there were three different types of collisions, I think the data table is gonna look a lot more organized if those are segmented by bolded lines. So, how I can do that is I can highlight the ones that I want those bolded lines around, and there's these thick outside borders. So, I'm gonna put thick outside borders around each of the different types of collisions so that they're kind of grouped together. And then you can see how when you then copy and paste your data tables into Excel, ooh, or into Word, sorry. See how that went over the edge? Easy fix. You select it and then go to table layout because it's the layout that we want to fix. And there's this auto fit button. You can always auto fit it and it'll put it exactly to where you need it to be. Okay, so that was my table two, which is my velocities of the carts before and after the collisions. And then let me go ahead and place my table one, the massive carts in there as well while we're doing this. Okay, and that one I can make wider so that it's not all crazy. Okay, there we go. So there are my data tables. I don't want those bold after all. Now let's get into our analysis where we do all of our calculations. Okay, I have already set up those data tables for the momentum of the carts before and after the collision. Um, I've also set it up for the total momentum uh, before and after the collision. And then I know on our data on our data sheets we had the ratios. I'm actually going to show you guys another tool that we can use to check for conservation and to check and see how reliable our data sets are. Okay, so those are there. First, let's do the momentum of cart one before the collision. So momentum is mass times velocity. So I say equals. Remember, equals says Excel, hey, we want to do math. And then I want it to take my mass, okay, and multiply it. So it's that little star shift eight by the velocity, that cell right there. I press equals. And ta-da, it does that math for me. Unfortunately, watch what happens when I drag this down. Okay, see how these are getting messed up? You might wonder what's going on there. So if I click on it, it says that this one is A3 times C6. Okay, let me zoom out so you guys can see it highlight the cells that it's using. And I don't want it to be a three, I still want it to be a two. I do want it to be a six, because that's the run to velocity. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that in a formula. 
one you could just type in that mass 0 0.2716 was mine and do it that way that is one way that totally works or when you type your original formula if you put dollar signs in front of the letters okay it will hold that cell so again if you put dollar signs in front of the letters even when you drag that formula down it will hold that formula okay my decimals are all already aligned because I had done this previously but again remember it's these numbers up here that can change your decimal place values. Since we had four digits, four significant figures for all of our velocities, I want my momentum to all have four significant figures. Okay? So now, momentum of cart two before the collision. Well, I know that's just gonna be zero, so I'm just going to zero those ones out. Okay, now after the collision. So, if you remember, it was this cell right here, A2, oops. And I'm going to put those money signs before it so that I make sure that it holds that one. And then I want to multiply it by the velocity of cart one after the collision, this cell. Done. Okay. It has 0, 0.0. Remember, those zeros aren't significant. So we still have four sig figs there. And that is what I want to keep all the way through. Look, notice down here, I am getting some really small numbers. But that's okay. If you guys remember in those magnetic collisions, the car did basically stop. Um, so it is totally fine to have less sig figs there just for the sake of aligning those decimals. Okay, so then the momentum of cart two after the collision equals, this time it is going to be cell A, or sorry, cell B2, cell B2, times the velocity of cart two after the collision, which on my cell is cell F5, okay? And then I click and I drag it down, okay? And I don't like that these numbers have different amount of significant digits than these ones, so I'm going to go ahead and make it so all of those are the same, okay? We're just gonna stick with the four decimal places after um, the dot. Okay, also I wanna fix this because this is bothering me. Make it so those are all the same height. Okay, now we need to get the total momentum before the collision. It's missing a thing there, so Total momentum is going to be the momentum of cart one plus the momentum of cart two. There we go. And then I can click and drag that formula down. And oops, scrolled over way too much there. For the total momentum after the collision, that was the total momentum before, total momentum after will be momentum of cart one after the collision plus the momentum of cart two after the collision. Okay, and click and drag that down and fix it so that our decimal places are significant. Now, notice point one, point, or point one one, point one one, point one five, point one five, point one two, point one, okay. 0 0.14, 0 0.12, that one's a little bit off. 0 0.147, 0 0.136. Okay, all of these numbers look pretty similar. That's kind of our clue that it is likely that momentum is conserved. Okay, and we've talked about this. You guys probably could figure that out pretty intuitively. So what we're going to do is a new technique of error called percent difference. If you're interested, the formula for it, this is from our lab format sheet that you have glued into the back of your notebook, is the first value minus the second value divided by the average of the first and second values. What this allows you to do is it allows you to see if the difference between them is statistically significant, okay, if it actually makes a difference. Because if they're only about five 
less than 10% difference, that means they're pretty much very similar numbers, okay? So we're gonna plug this formula into Excel. So again, equals the first value, we'll go with the before collision, divide it minus the second value, and actually I'm gonna put that in parentheses because I want that whole thing to be divided by the average of those two numbers, okay? So the first value minus the second value divided by the average of those two numbers. Again, I am just using this formula right here, okay? And putting it into Excel. So I go enters and it gives me a number 0 0.04. Oh, I forgot to make it a percentage. Two ways you can do that. You can either go times 100, oops, that's not 100, 100%. Oh, it didn't even like that. Okay, fine Excel, we'll do it your way. You can just tell Excel, hey, make this a percentage and it'll make it a percentage for you. So then we can drag that formula down. Let's control those decimals. Okay, and it looks like we have really low percent differences for our hook and pile collisions, okay? There was really good conservation of momentum there. Mixed collisions, so-so, about a 20% difference. That means there's probably a lot of error going on there. And then here, we're at around 10%, so not too bad. Making our average percent difference, taking an average of an average, average of those numbers, about, oh, I wanted that in a percent, about 11%. So not great, but not too bad either. That's still a really low percent difference between those numbers if we're expecting them to be the same. Now, let's go ahead and do the kinetic energy calculations, okay? I'm gonna shrink these up a little bit too because I want to. Zoop. Always trying to make sure we're in good formatting. Okay, so now for kinetic energy, okay? First, let's get the kinetic energy of cart one before the collision. So, if you remember, the formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So, equals one half, I find it easier to type that in as 0.5, times the mass, it's cart one, so that is this mass right here. Okay, if you're ever like not in your cell, it also shows up right here. I'm gonna put the dollar signs in front of that because I wanted to use that number for all of the calculations times the velocity before the collision squared so a little caret squared and I get my kinetic energy before the collision click and drag it down you can look at any of the cells and double click on them just to make sure that they're using the right numbers okay and indeed they are so we're good to go Okay, now cart two before the collision, well, it was stopped. So we can just enter all of those zeros there. Kinetic energy of cart one after the collision equals 0.5 times that cell, which I remember it, it was A2 times the velocity after the collision squared. Okay, there we go. Click and drag that one down. Now let's go ahead and look at the kinetic energy of cart two after the collision. So again, 0 0.5 times the mass of cart two, which is cell B2, times the velocity of cart two after the collision squared. Okay, get that in there, take it, drag it down. Um, I'm going to control those decimals a little bit, it's a little too long. Okay, total kinetic energy before the collision, kinetic energy of cart one plus cart two, it is zero, so we could just say all of it is cart one. Drag that formula down, total kinetic energy after the collision, 
add up the two after the collisions and click and drag it down. Okay, now let's look at those numbers. We have 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.04, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.0. Okay, these numbers don't look as similar. So we're gonna use another technique called a, using a ratio to kind of get that before after collision stuff. So, if we look at that, okay, we can actually see some pretty interesting relationships. Like, see here how we have about 0.5 on both of them, okay? So that means the kinetic energy was almost half of what it was when it stuck together in the collision. That might mean something. These ones were somewhere in the middle, and these ones were about 0.8. So we didn't get full conservation of kinetic energy, but we did get pretty close. Okay, um, last thing I need to do is just format these uh, data tables and copy and paste them into my cells. So I'm going to go ahead and put on all those borders. Again, I'm going to do those bolded borders to help separate out the different types of collisions. Zoop. And... outside borders and then I need to do all of the borders on this one I hadn't done that yet and I'm gonna add borders just on this little one since that one's kind of a different number I'm gonna actually go ahead and shade it make it look a little bit cleaner there oh it didn't actually shade shade there we go okay now I can copy and paste my data tables into Word. Again, if they don't paste cleanly, you just go to table layout and you can auto fit it, okay? And if it still looks funky, just adjust it as it works. With these big data tables, it is gonna be a little bit challenging. Ooh, I don't like how that split between pages. I am going to control shift enter to make that on its own page. And I'm going to shrink these up because a lot of those words are mixed between different things. They're just headings, so they can be small. Okay, there we go. That looks a little bit better. So this was table three. We always want to number our data tables, the momentum of the collisions. And then I will have, oops, I don't want that bold. Table four, which is the kinetic energy of the collisions. So let me copy and paste that one over. And fix the formatting always. And ta-da, I'm ready to move on and answer some analysis questions and make sense of this data. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.